Now Dylan and I couldn't, kind of couldn't decide on this one, but um, we talked about a stand setup. You know, Dylan talked about a stand setup video, how we wanted to do that. But what do you think, Dylan? Uh, three stands you have to have or three stand big buck setup? Mm, I'd say big buck setups is definitely going to get more clicks. Well, and one of the things that like we talk about a three stand big buck setup, it's implying that it's it's one set of stands to hunt. And that's kind of what we're talking about where three stands you have to have is the same thing, but we want to look at these more like a set. And that's where it works. And this works anywhere a whitetail roams. And when it comes to gun hunting, bow hunting, whatever it is, these are three important stand setups that every hunter should have. And we'll talk about afternoon, morning, all day stands and the number, kind of how that relates to your overall stand, the number of stands that you have. And I drew this diagram out. We talked about an old field, food source in the corner of a field, woods and then buck bedding we talk about all the time that layering how to find a buck bed how to hunt a buck where you're in the morning where you have the food does and fawns young bucks and then old bucks and you have that layering system and so you, you have defined morning and evening stands but that system of bedding also applies to how you can set up your hunt for the entire season and even if you just had three stands you need these three stand locations well first one we're going to talk about is the afternoon stand that's something that everyone obviously hunts or people hunt afternoons than morning it's a really critical stand but what is an afternoon stand when you go into a stand you get off work and you rush get off an hour early two hours early whatever it is and you get to your stand maybe the early season you're you're off at five but doesn't get dark till quarter after eight or eight whatever it might be you have a couple hours to hunt where is that stand it's going to be located by food deer if you went back into a bedding area stand back in the woods you're going to spook deer going in the, the advantage of hunting a morning stand in the morning is for one you don't walk through food to get there you walk out around get into that in the back side of that bedding area wait deer for for deer to come back to you but two when you're at that stand location you have the luxury of being there for three or four hours and knowing what deer are around you if they're passing through if they're feeding through if they're bedded down they get up and leave you can get out of your stand but when you go in in the afternoon you're going in blind you don't know where they're at so you don't know that the first 100 yards or 150 yards out of your stand is free and clean of deer and you can get out real quick because deer just moved so it's like when you're in there in the morning a lot of times i plan to sit till 11 during the rut but it might i might sit till 12 30 because if there's deer around me at 11 or a nice buck just went through that i didn't want to shoot at quarter to 11 and i know they're on their feet moving i might wait a little bit to get out afternoon stand relates to food you're getting in close enough to bedding area movement that you can get those deer when they're on their feet during daylight a little bit longer because a lot of times as mature bucks or older bucks are not stepping out to that food source or their food source in general it doesn't matter if it's apple trees a clear cut or a food plot or an ag field until right at around dark or a little after so i want to be back in the woods 50 to 100 yards i want to be in a stand location that's close enough to be the bottom of the funnel of movement because it doesn't matter where where bucks are bedding back here they're all going to this point right here that's that funnel. So I want to be on the outside of that funnel based on the wind. And I want to be close to the food so I can capture buck movement from a lot of different areas to that food source with that respective stand location. I want to be in there so I, I'm close enough to the food to take advantage of that funnel, but not so close that I spook the deer out of the food source when I get out after dark. That's an afternoon stand location. You're just lightly going in. You're not spooking deer out of their bedding. You're not spooking deer out of the food source when you get out. You want to, that food source to keep producing, keep creating that movement all season long. Then you have the morning stands, the true morning stands, where as a hunter, maybe I'm coming in from over here. Maybe I can come in through another property or the backside of a property. Maybe I'm coming through here. But what I'm not doing for a morning stand is entering through the food, spooking out the deer, going back into the morning stand. Well, they're not going to be there. doesn't matter if you spook out the food in the evening or afternoon, or you spook it out in the morning. It's going to ruin your hunts from there on after because those deer are not going to be in those bedding areas. Does that make sense? You spook them out, that food source, those deer want to hit that food source right around dark. Well, if you spook out their bedding areas, they might just slot over. They want to still keep hitting that food. But when you spook out that food source, those deer aren't going to be in those bedding areas. So it's critical to maintain the setup to where you get into your morning stands a lot differently than you get into an afternoon stand. And you might even go into an afternoon stand where you come in, sit in this stand right here. You could even walk through the food to get there because there's no deer up there at three o'clock and it's getting dark at five. And then when you get out, 
you rejoin your morning stand access and, and get out around. You don't walk back through that food source. You go in one way, come out another. Same with the morning stand. You might come back in this way, get back here, but you know you can go out and there's a road up here or something. You can get out. You might go in a different one way and go out a different way. The morning stands are different. They're back in those bedding. I'm, I'm hunting the outside of the bedding area, not in the bedding area. So I go right up to that edge where I know there's rub scrapes, there's trails, movements, some type of pinch point, maybe a creek crossing, inside corner of a really thick patch along the edge of a habitat change, maybe along the edge of a clear cut where deer are traveling back and forth between old woods and new woods, right along that edge of change, maybe a swamp edge, creek edge, something like that where they're following. So it's putting me in that window. And, uh, and of course, I love to hunt mock scrapes back in a spot like that. Even have a camera. If I had a camera in one spot like there, back there, I'd tell you what's going on in that whole area and how your other stands are even doing because they're on that same line of movement or in the same general vicinity. Then it comes to the all day stands. A lot of people think, well, I'm going to go sit all day. People even get geared up on social media. It's opening day, I'm going to go sit all day. Don't do that, folks. Really hunt a lot smarter. Look at this is a morning stand, this is an evening stand. And what you really have to be careful of is you're not hunting one and spooking out the other. Now, if you hunt an, an evening stand and you have this great morning sit potential and you feel confident for whatever reason that bucks me back there in the morning, well, don't hunt it in the evening before. Because if he's coming out in the evening, if you blow that food source, he's not going to be in that bedding area. And likewise, if he's coming out to the, to the food source every single night, you go back there and spook him in his bedding area, well, he might not come out to that food source for several days. He might shift over. He might be there in a week, but likely that day he's not going to be back in there. You just spooked him out and probably the following several days as well. Then you have that all-day stand. That's somewhere in between. I like my all-day stands especially to be over a water hole and mock scrape combination. Even if there's a lot of water on the property, make sure you have a great mock scrape location. If you're wondering about how to create mock scrapes, I have over 50 mock scrape videos on this channel. Just look it up on the playlist. So lots of advice of creating a mock scrape. It's free, cheap, easy not even buying anything to do it other than some parachute cord. So pretty cheap. Notice out of all stands we have, eight of them, we only have two all day stands. And I would say that's even being generous and a lot of properties look, like, look at, you might 15% of stands, 20% at the most will be all day. The rest are morning or afternoon. It's hard to have that perfect X of movement in between bedding, feeding, and have that all-day stand. But it's possible. And a lot of times you can have one side of the cover and one on the other. You know, they might be 200 yards apart. They might be a half mile apart. But bottom line is you can use each one of them for a different set of wind patterns, and that's the best way to plan, is to have those two all-day stands. So if you had an all-day stand, one morning stand, one afternoon, you pick your best stand location, at least have one, two, three. Have a morning stand, an afternoon stand, and an all day stand. And if you have the luxury of being able to have eight stands in one location, well then you can spread it out a little bit for different winds, different access routes. The bottom line is, it's critical. The three most important stands in your property or public land, anywhere you can hunt, would be one afternoon stand relating to food, one all day stand, in between food and cover that you can still access without spooking out the food or the cover. And then one bedding area stand where you can come in a different way, get on the back side of that bedding area and wait for deer to come back to you in the morning. Use those three stands, understand the timing of each, and it's critical for you to have those three, st three stands. But what's really cool about that is that relates to the entire line of movement and deer in general. You can apply this to public land, private land, anywhere you hunt. You find those three stand locations your success will skyrocket, especially if you combine hunting when the weather's right, not going in when it's too hot, too windy, do, too rainy. Really base your hunting decisions. The front's gone through, the bad weather's cleared out, temperature's dropped. Yeah, morning, evening, all day stands, those three, just even if you just have those three, and that'll lead you to a great hunt this fall and beyond. I appreciate you guys watching the YouTube channel, but I don't know if everyone knows everything that we have to offer, whether it's on whitetailhabitatsolutions.com, our website, or WHS Wildlife Blends, our seed company. Also, Instagram you can check out. I'm very active on Instagram, putting strategies on there, photos of what we do every day. Uh, much more active there than Facebook. But our seed, web classes, books, clients, 
articles. I have over 600 articles on whitetailhabitatsolutions.com, everything whitetail strategy. Of course, we have hats on there. And then make sure to check us out on Instagram again. But lots of stuff to offer. We're always coming out with new things. And this isn't the end of it. We have more things coming soon. Make sure to check us out.